Hello there and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigerians' leading initiative in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes potpourri of brand news, branding forecast and industry conversation all in a mix encompassing thorough, in-depth, all aimed at promoting the brand idea. I'm Ogali Mafuru. It's insightful, it's exciting, it's enriching, it's Marketing Edge on TV. A half art TV show on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. Marketing Edge on TV is a potpourri of juicy and exclusive industry news on brands, advertising, media, PR, brand and focus, industry conversation, and the entire gamut of integrated marketing communications business. It's a business show with glamour and grandeur. We serve you hot and sizzling with all ingredients in the mix. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. First on Marketing Edge on TV is Brand News, where we bring you the latest development around brands and in the field of marketing, advertising and communication in Nigeria and around the world. Now on Brand News. The much-anticipated Marketing Edge Quarterly Virtual Summit held last week with a call on brand managers to create worthwhile experience for their target audience along consumers' journey. The event, which had top industry players, intellectually renowned practitioners and seasoned academia in the field of advertising and marketing, gave insights into how to win the reluctant consumer in the digital era and how to merge the traditional media and the digital media for the optimization of marketing campaigns. The highly cerebral professionals and entrepreneurs who spoke on winning in the digital economy, the purpose question and how to win reluctant consumers, and digital advertising versus traditional media, the convergent rate challenge, advise brand managers to decipher accurately the internal composure of their target audience and ensure their products answer the consumer's needs and aspirations, adding that traditional media and digital media must collaborate to surmount convergent challenge. Speaking on how to win a reluctant consumer in the digital era, the speakers averred that the target audience on the digital space are young Africans, postulating that one in five persons in the world is an African, noting that the median age of Africa is between 18 to 25 years, and it is expected to rise exponentially in the next few decades. They advise practitioners to ensure proper segmenting and analysis of the African consumer's mindsets and exploit the digital platform in meeting the needs of the consumers, noting that the consumers are both digital and analog in nature. According to them, brand managers should position themselves in a way that resonates with their target audience, noting that consumers naturally gravitate to brands that are responsive to their needs, aspirations, ambition, and desires. The Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON, has set up a committee to produce a suitable framework to define a minimum standard expected in any relationship by the parties playing in the industry's field of business. This was disclosed by the APCON Registrar and Chief Executive Dr. Lale Konfa Dolapo during the induction ceremony of the newly registered advertising practitioners. The Registrar said the Standard of Practice Committee has begun work and the outcome of the exercise expected to be adopted given the operational force of law, adding that the outcome hopes to curb the incessant debt claims and cancer claims between advertisers, agencies and media houses. The agency has also set up a code review committee for the purpose of reviewing the fifth edition of the Nigerian Code of Advertising Practice, Sales Promotion and Other Rights and Restriction on Practice to bring the code up to date and at par with what is obtainable in other countries and in line with international best practices. Media Independent Practitioners Association of Nigeria, MIPAN, the umbrella body for media buying and media agencies in Nigeria, has officially inducted three new members into its fold at the 2021 Annual General Meeting and Business Meeting. The new members of the association are Ubiquity Media, Harvest Media, and Atradas Media were inducted at an event held on June 19, 2021 at Rivera Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. Speaking at the event themed, Building an Enduring Organization in a Fast-Changing World, MIPAN President Femi Adelusi urged 
agencies to work in synergy as working together would help to withstand the challenges at this time. He emphasized that as agencies, there would always be competitions, winning pitches and losing some, but relationship is the most important to survive through ups and downs. Well, that was brand news. Nest is branded Focus after this break. Here today, gone tomorrow. Cause you're volatile like the water. And you promise what you don't know. Sometimes it's right and then it's so wrong. Them go do like say them why. We promise you the world. My brother all now worship. Up all on no be open eye. I see no fee water. Can't you no be letter? Smartphone Network. Everybody want to enjoy. Everybody want to relax. Everybody want to glow. Nobody want to relax. Oh, no, no. Everybody want to enjoy. Sensational world of love, now accessible through one code, star triple seven hash. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. Now on Branding Focus. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, an advertiser's message needed to reflect messaging that was more appropriate. And no subsector of the advertising industry was worst hit like the out of home. Despite the big blows from the crisis, the OOA subsector is recovering fast. Coincidentally, after many years of expecting programmatic OOH to take off, data targeting and its ability to buy discrete audiences has become a key selling point. As more brands realize the potential of digital creative optimization in OOH and not just see it as the preserve of digital online, Programmatic is revolutionizing digital advertising on desktop and mobile. Back in the days, advertisers saw it as a way to direct audience to their website and in most cases, not even optimizing it to work on mobile. However, the pandemic has highlighted the way that OOH doesn't have to just be a brand awareness play. With the huge rise in mobile purchasing happening over the last year, OOH is fast becoming a store window with the QR code or call to action delivering direct sales at the moment. Technology is being used in the sector to automate the mechanics of the buying and selling process, but where it could really make a difference is with data-driven real-time programmatic. Rather than using tools to simply mechanize the process, Programmatic is opening a whole of new possibilities in the post-pandemic world. Despite the fact that buyers and sellers are working off their own platforms, technology is primarily automating how campaigns are planned and traded. And that's no small accomplishment in the post-pandemic landscape. Real-time mobile data is now powering programmatic decision-making. In a new world, while programmatic is empowering buyers to target the right audiences on the right screen at the most appropriate moment with the right creative, technology is also opening up the medium to new advertisers and new forms of advertising. To improve audience targeting, advertisers need to react to the real-world situation by clever use of data and make better use of their inventory. With more and more media owners digitalizing their traditional paper-based inventory, the growth potential in programmatic is huge 
and should be utilized by all future fit brands. And that was Brand in Focus. Next is Industry Conversation, where we have one-on-one -on -one interactions with distinguished men and women who have made tremendous impact in the business of brand management and, of course, in the management of brand business. Well, we started a conversation with the marketing director of Coca-Cola Nigeria Limited. The part two of the conversation will be coming after this break. You won't go shake your body. This daddy make you calm down. He the farm say he's happy. You want to grow six parts in a day. I beg you not to pass me your power. You want to show yourself. Oh. Whatever your size, find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you. Airtel, the smartphone network. Will this penalty be the decider? It's going through the player's mind here. You could cut the tension with a knife. Is there one more twist in this long, rocky road to the final? And here's the kick, and he scores! They've taken the win, they're through. Don't worry, my boy. There's always a next time. Join the winning team and stream every match with Glow Special Data Plans. For everything Glow, dial star triple seven hash. Great supporters of football. Glow. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the brand ideal. Uh, let's talk a bit about the um, COVID-19 pandemic. We know for certain that um, there, there have been some disruption in the way businesses you know, operate as a result of COVID-19. Now, how would you assess or, 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 uh, holistically the impact of um, COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerians' economy in 2020 and, of course, on um, FMCG industry in particular? Um, yeah, thanks for that. I think if you, if you look at the macroeconomic situation in Nigeria, you know, as a result of COVID, I mean, we did slip back into a recession just because, again, you don't have a lot of growth going on. We had our fair share of lockdowns at the beginning, and I think it's been topsy-turvy. At the very beginning of COVID, people were uncertain, so people went out. And when you go shopping, if you were going to buy one of an item before you buy more. So we did see that okay. people, you know, bought more at the beginning. But again, in a, in a country where disposable income starts to reduce, that again reduced um, over time as well. For us specifically, you know, the quick service restaurants are a part of our business. And so once you shut down quick service um, restaurants, then one source of volume is, is totally shut down um, at, at that time. So we did have that. And I think every industry faced that to some degree. So what it then meant for us was to then innovate in the route to market, how we get our products um, to, to consumers, how consumers are able, or how customers are able to pay for our products um, and, and, and all of that. But I think just like everything that happens in Nigeria, you know, you, you look at the signs, you, you learn from the experiences, and then you get better at managing um, those experiences. So COVID did have an impact on Nigeria. We are hoping that this year we'll start to see growth in GDP, we estimates are between 1.5 and 2.5 percent. So hopefully, as that happens, then we start to see um, um, positive traction. But you know, Nigeria had a poor unemployment rate before. Now it's up to 33 percent. Mm -hmm. That's not that's never a good thing. So yeah. you want to get out of COVID and get people employed, you know, as much as possible, such that you start to see a reduction in some of those numbers that went too high as a result of COVID. 
Okay. So could you state in specific terms the feat uh, achieved by Coca-Cola Company in the height um, as in response to COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah. I think, I mean, like I said earlier, making a difference is critical to us as, as a company. And so some of the things that we did were, first of all, we partnered with the Red Cross. Um, again, the Red Cross being globally known for, for being able to step into things like this, we did make our significant donations to the Red Cross at that time, you know, invested in communicating the pandemic, what people um, um, had to do, as well as relief. Um, our customers are critical to us. They are, they are, they are big um, elements or, or life source of our business. And so we did also then provide, you know, up to 200 million, if I remember correctly, to our customers to make sure that they were, you know, um, um, pandemic ready and, and they were able to run their businesses um, 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 during the, the pandemic as well. So along with our bottling partner, NBC, there were a lot of those kind of initiatives just to make sure that we contributed our own quota to, to what was happening at the time. Okay. So what are your projections for the year 2021, seeing that there's a bit of positivity in the air and businesses are beginning to, you know, come back to operation? What would be your projection for the year 2021? Um, 2021 is the, is the year the world defeated COVID. You know, if, if 2020 was the year of COVID. So okay. that's, again, a, a positive um, um, thing. You know, mm. we, you check with consumers and everyone is tired of having stayed at home and mm. everybody's eager to get things to get back to normal. Um, we know that there's some vaccination in Nigeria. It's still low. We hope that that um, continues over the next couple of months just so that we are comfortable and confident for, for people to come out. So 2021 is an exciting year. Um, we, we see positive signs and we want those positive signs to continue. We know that there are always going to be conversations around insecurity, around infrastructure. We are hoping that all of that, as, as we start to come fully out to 100%, you know, starts to, starts to go away. So, you know, it's, it's an exciting year. We are excited. Like I said, this year, Coke is 70 years in Nigeria. So for us as a system with our bottling partner, it's a big um, year for us. So the year is already looking good. We're almost halfway there. Yeah. And so we're excited about what the rest of the year is going to bring um, just before getting into 2022. I'm excited for you too. Well, um, what should Nigerians be expecting from Coca-Cola's sustainability and social responsibility initiatives this year and in the future? Um, like I said, brands done sustainably is a big part of what our company stands for, you know. So for, for sure, it's really, first of all, about how we look at sustainability. So waste, you know, and, and managing waste and managing plastic waste especially um, is a big part of that. Um, women are a big part of our sustainability initiatives. Mm -hmm. We had a program globally to have 5 million um, women empowered by 2020 and Nigeria was about 450,000 of that 5 million effort globally. So mm -hmm. for us, Nigeria is a big part of that. If you look at our value chains and you look at our partners, women are really the ones who carry the business. About 67 to 70% of our customers are women. So we do take that seriously and that's a big um, part of our initiatives. Water is also um, a, a big part of what we, we do. We, we use water in our products and therefore we have a responsibility to replenish water and you know, put, put, put water back in there. Um, and so for us, there's, there's quite a lot that we have from a sustainability agenda part. From a marketing perspective, it's really how we incorporate that into our brands. We know that the, the generations that are coming are going to be more critical um, about companies like ours are going to be critical about what brands stand for. And therefore, we know that building sustainability into our brand plans is critical um, for the future. So we have taken steps like on Sprite, where mm -hmm. we, we have moved the bottle from green to clear to make mm -hmm. sure that the brand can start to be, first of all, recyclable, 100%, and then we can start to claim those and then show steps along the journey um, as, as we move on as well. So for us, incorporating sustainability into our brands from a marketing perspective is a critical thing as we go forward. And I see that um, part of your sustainability initiative is a World Without Waste initiative, yes. where you hope to ensure that um, 
uh, you achieve 100% recyclable uh, packaging by 2025. Yes. How have you been able to lead in that conversation in the industry to ensure that this is followed through? Yeah, I think the first element for us is design. Um, and, and so I talked about Sprite earlier. You know, we know that a clear bottle is more recyclable than a colored bottle. And so it's a big initiative for us to take a brand that has existed for so many years in a green bottle and turn that um, into, into a clear bottle. So again, that's one element of, of, of our um, pillars that we use. The other one is collection. Okay. That's the biggest challenge that we have in Nigeria, just being able to collect the plastic for people to make them into something else, to, to be able to be recycled. And so we do have um, a partnership, which is our third pillar, with the um, Food and Beverage Recycling Association. It's known as FBA, as FBRA, and the plan is to collect you know, we, we have a strategic plan for collecting up to 30% of, of, of all of the plastic that is used, you know, in the first phase. And then, of course, you have other phases that get us to, to a goal of a 100%. So what equity height are you foreseeing for Coca-Cola brand in the next, say, five or ten years? Um, Coca-Cola has existed for 135 years, you know, and, and like I said, in Nigeria for 70 years. And therefore, as far as equity of the brand is concerned, the brand has a very clear purpose, okay? And the purpose of Coca-Cola is to unite people or uplift people to unite and bridge divides. And if you look at the world today, there are a lot of divides everywhere. Even in Nigeria, there's, there's always um, um, different opinions and and the idea is really for the brand to be at the center of bringing people together you know and because that is a global um, consumer insight it's universal therefore the brand will always be able to build equity on on those platforms when you think about coke you think about the color red mm -hmm. you know you think about football you think about music you think about christmas you think about happiness we have built memory structures um, with the brand over the 135 years and those memory structures will exist and so we will continue to build new memory structures into the digital age so as far as equity of the brand is concerned we expect the brand to continue to be one of the most loved brands um, in the world one of the most popular brands in the world the, the great thing about this is you know there were people before us we are there and there mm. will be people after us because the brand will exist forever Okay, so you talked about um, competitions and football while you were talking about um, um, the, the responding to the last question. Well, I found out that Coca-Cola partners um, Nigerian Football Federation as official soft drink. I see that that's a strategic way of promoting your brand. Can you harp on the reason behind that idea, using soccer, for instance? Um, I mean, we love football in Nigeria. We 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 love the English Premier League, which we've also partnered with. We love um, the Super Eagles. Growing up for a lot of people, those are the memories that they have. If you if you drive around Lagos on a, on a Saturday when there's football going on, you would find people actively watching. It's, it's, Nigeria is a football nation, more than a lot of nations. You know, we are one of the most, um, we are one of the craziest nations when it comes to football. You know, you, I was, I was driving the other day, um, I think Chelsea, Chelsea won the mm -hmm. Champions League. I yeah. saw a guy standing in the rain <laughs> with a Chelsea towel and he was mm -hmm. dancing. You won't find that in a lot of, 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 of markets. You might not even find that in London itself, where Chelsea is. So you, you know that the passion that Nigerians have for football is real. Yes. And therefore, for us, that passion also translates to, to the Super Eagles. Next year is a World Cup year. Um, the World Cup is in Qatar. There will be a Nations Cup as well at the beginning of the year. And so we know that um, the Super Eagles are also a great team. They have achieved great things. Um, in the past, we know that they will achieve great things in the future. If you look at the players in the team now, where they are playing, how they are playing, you can almost sense what's about to happen, starting with the Nations Cup. I am a fan of the Super Eagles. We are very optimistic about that. And so we have a strong partnership um, with the NFF. Um, and really for us, it's 
it's every year it's the friendly matches it's the big um world cup years we are a big fan um of, of the super eagles because our consumers are a big fan of the super eagles and so for us it's really to always follow the direction of the consumers and if the consumers love something then we have no choice but to love it as well yeah thank you very much for uh, being with us on industry conversation thank you Gary. thank you for your time and that's it on the industry conversation we've been speaking with the marketing director of Coca-Cola Nigeria Limited, I'm sure you had to, you know, put certain things on hold to be with us on Industry Conversation. And that's it on Industry Conversation. Uh -huh. If you're not getting me fresh meat, do you understand? Okay, I'm at the Can meat. Can you switch the video call, please? Okay, get me that one. The one by your side. Yes. I thought yes. you were going to be okay. Okay, fine, get me. Please. <laughs> Where do I buy all these things now? Hey, go get Glow Bereketa and call madam. Bereketa. Uh -huh. The heavyweight voice and data plan. Get 600 Naira free credit plus 700% bonus on every recharge and up to 100% bonus on data plans. Mr. Kaku likes to Kaku. Mm -hmm. Every day he must do Kaku. Yeah. If you want help me, go Kaku. Mm. If you want to help me, go Kaku. Get up to 60 gigabytes data free. Marketing Edge on TV promoting the brand ideal. Well, that's it on Marketing Edge on TV. Do well to join us again for another interactive and insightful time of the program. Same time next week. I'm Ogale Mafrou. Do have a wonderful day. <laughs>